OpenAI just shared research footage of their AI-generated videos, many of which show 3D animation and what would be considered visual effects if someone else created it. Let's take a look at the top ones and see how it's looking. It's kind of scary. So the first one I wanted to look at is something similar to I created in The Little Mermaid. And it's a scene of a lot of aquatic animals, a bit more dreamscapey because we're in a city, obviously. What's impressive is the scale that it's able to create it at, but obviously there's still fidelity issues. Things are going in between each other. There's like a whale, but with turtle shell textures on it. It's super impressive, but there's still obviously for a production level use case, but I don't really see this getting implemented in <laughs> production settings. The shot you're watching right now in The Little Mermaid, I spent one year working on. So I can't imagine that someone working in AI with limited ability to affect pixel level changes is going to be able to actually use this and get client approval for it in a production setting. But nonetheless, it's incredibly impressive. Let's take a look at something that's specifically more 3D animation. So this is very cool, but also <laughs> kind of scary on multiple levels. Because of how good it is and because of how also weird it is. I'm not sure what the prompt was for this one. They're able to recreate this kind of cute 3D look because there's other examples on the website that match this. I've not seen anything lip sync to audio. Maybe we're really close. Maybe there's stuff behind the scenes I don't know about, but what I'm seeing in terms of just how the camera comes to a bit of a hard stop, you know, a note I would have in animation was like, hey, that, that camera moves a bit wonky. We shift right at the end and then we stop kind of a, a bit too abruptly. Tone that down but have everything else be the same, I'm not imagining that's gonna be possible with the current abilities of AI. Now, a year from now, that may be different, but currently, I'm not super worried in terms of job security. There's just not the fine tuning ability that I would expect. So let's take a look at another 3D example, this dancing <laughs> kangaroo, which is warping around. So, you know, a lack of body mechanics from a, of a 3D animation perspective, you'd be getting a lot of uh, notes, but what's super impressive is the groom on this, which is quite time intensive to do in 3D. And also the cr that there is a crowd in the background and they're all kind of doing something slightly different is also impressive. So there's definitely a lot that's remarkable about these examples, not to mention the cloth that's physically reacting fairly accurately to what the kangaroo is doing. And you're also, you know, the absence of things that I'm not seeing, I'm not seeing the textures change rapidly or warp or morph on the shirt, for example, or even, you know, like the consistency of this white stripe on his belly is there through the whole animation. So that's encouraging from a consistency standpoint. I think, you know, obviously we would expect to maybe see some reflections in the sunglasses, but you do in the live action examples see reflections. So maybe there's a bit of a model missing for their research to translate those kinds of features into 3D animation prompts. But this is super impressive. This is probably one of the more impressive ones because of all of these elements tied together in terms of the hands, the, the shirt, the fur, the crowd, the lighting, it's all quite impressive. So here's another 3D example with an interesting palm on this uh, monster looking character. I think this one's interesting from the viewpoint of it's not like another animal you would have seen. Like the first example um, is also just a generated uh, character. Now the, the controversy around this technology is they've most likely stolen these models that they've trained their AI on from artists and not given them credit or compensation. And that's where the controversy in all of this lies, that many people say this is begging for litigation and that they're going to be sued for stealing people's property in mass. While on the surface level, this is really impressive, especially for productions who are very tight around litigation and you can't just steal people's stuff and then use that in commercial endeavors. I would say there's a big gap to bridge in terms of the legal implications of stuff like this as well. 
but this one's really cool. It'd be interesting to see not furry ear hair horns. I don't, you know, notes like that where you'd be like, well, I actually want the things coming off their head to be horns and not have fur on it. Again, that little level of detail, I'm not sure if you'd be able to do. And that's where you would get stuck trying to use this for client and commercial work. So this is one of the more impressive ones for me because of how accurate and real life it is. But at the same time, I'm sure you could find stock footage that looks better than this and doesn't have the wonkiness. So the things that get closer to real life, I think have less of an application because there's existing material out there in stock footage. But obviously there's a gap where we don't have everything captured in stock footage that you wouldn't be able to use this for. But it's super interesting, especially with in regards to this other creature, crab-like thing, you know, maybe out of an accident, it can create creatures <laughs> unintentionally that we don't have on Earth because of its inability to accurately recreate uh, existing animals. So maybe that's an opportunity to exploit is creating new creatures that we don't actually have based on its ability to not accurately recreate them, <laughs> uh, the animals that we're actually trying to recreate. I've noticed this a lot too with ChatGPT if I ask it to create an image with Dolly, which you can do with OpenAI that even just giving it exactly the words you wanna have in the image, it can't recreate correctly the right spelling. Like here we have, we're missing a T on otter. So it's amazing that it can create the groom on the character, the reflections in their eye, the environment, the foam on the water. But then you see things where you just can't even get the right spelling <laughs> for a word that you give it every letter exactly how you want to see it, and it still can't recreate it. That's where that signals to me that if we can't even get the text right, I don't see how we're going to be able to adjust the minutia of little things like adjust the teeth, make them slightly offset a bit more so they're not perfectly symmetrical or other types of client notes like that that you're gonna get. That signals to me there's still work behind the scenes to do. And these are really the best examples that they came up with. And that's why they're showing these. Now, I will say that Sam Altman on Twitter was soliciting people to send him prompts and he was sharing those on Twitter. So go check out Sam Altman's Twitter page to see some of those results. This example is interesting, again, because from a visual effects perspective, we're obviously in a fantasy environment, and this has multiple cuts with the same character. So that's very interesting from the perspective of using this in production to be able to see this have continuity between camera shots. So I'd be very, very interested to use that aspect of it and see how far it can be pushed because that's, especially with a character that you don't have lip sync on, like this robot, you could theoretically use this in a production or a small scale you know, YouTube video who you're your own client, so you're not having to address small details. But a character design like this where you don't have lip sync you're trying to match and you're able to match continuity of character design between cuts, this does create opportunity, I think, for people to create content with this. This is another trippy example that is interesting to see where they throw abstract things into a prompt like coffee and pirate ships and just see what it creates. This is super interesting for, I think, the motion graphics side of things and visual effects as well. But the water simulation, the foam, all of that stuff is really interesting to see how it reacts. You can also see some subsurface scattering from a 3D rendering perspective. The light is shining through the liquid when it gets thinner. All of that kind of recreation is really encouraging to see in this example. Now, I'm not sure why they showed this example. This is probably the worst one I found in their examples. It's not very well animated and it's the most simple. It's just a silhouette. Uh, so it's, I'm not sure why they would show this one because it was very underwhelming, but at the same time, it could totally be used in uh, an application of motion graphics or some you know child's storytelling medium, I think. But from an animation perspective and the most complex example, this was the worst one I found. But it obviously still impressive that it just created this from a prompt and there's multiple shots here is the thing that's impressive to me, that they were able to match the style between shots 
and keep it fairly consistent. I think that's the impressive thing with this one. Finally, we have this woolly mammoth example, which is remarkable because obviously we don't have woolly mammoths here, but they were training this somehow on artist renderings of woolly mammoths somewhere. They've gotten that visual data. I would imagine they've somehow combined this maybe in the prompt about elephants walking to get the right motion, but the weight shifts and the subtle jiggles in the feet from, they probably pulled from elephant footage, I would say. And nature documentaries uh, about historical evolutionary things in the past, I could see using this because they tell these stories, you know, these David Attenborough type stories where they need VFX animation like this. And it's incredibly impressive for an artist to create this. You would need a team of them who specialized in grooming, modeling, rigging, animation, environment, compositing, lighting. It would take a whole team of people. And if you're able to create this with a single prompt, this could be used, I think, in these kinds of nature documentaries that currently depend fully on visual effects studios to create them. If there are productions out there who are willing to sacrifice some of their note giving ability to make adjustments to stuff like this, I think this could definitely have an application as well. Be aware all of these videos do have a watermark on them so that you know that they're AI generated. This is gonna create an interesting conversation right now about how far we allow this to go and an ethical question and a existential question. Let me know in the comments what you think about this technology, how you think it's gonna affect the animation industry and you personally and in particular, are you going to consume this type of media? Do you think it's going to you know, replace people's jobs? Keep in mind, stop motion still exists, even though now we have motion capture. So these are all just tools that the artists can use. And especially now with how much media there is daily being uploaded to YouTube and TikTok, I think this is only just going to help fill that void of people wanting new content daily and that it's gonna create opportunity for people who are more creative and how they're gonna use this and also advance their own personal handmade work. And there's gonna be a lot of value in that. And we currently see this desire for handmade things in this no CGI rhetoric coming from directors who have hundreds and hundreds of visual effects shots in their movies like Barbie and Oppenheimer. So I think there's a real desire for human consumption to be of human made things. And we see that right now before we've even have access to technology like this AI generated video. I don't think the human made market for content is going to go away, I think it's going to be even more desirable when things like this get out there and in everyone's hands, people are going to want to see what humans make. That's my opinion. Let me know if you share it. And if you want to learn how to animate yourself, then check out animatorsjourney.com where you can get started with the podcast, a webinar, or a free rig you can download. Yeah.